Hi guys! Uh, I have to work in a very small space so I don't have a whole lot of room to show you what things look like so when I stand up there's only like you know my head's cut off so uh, this is the dress that I made out of that yellow stretch knit fabric I um, pattern hacked the, the neckline um, and then I added these are actually, this is actually a different fabric I had a few years ago where, you know, it was kind of lacy and see-through and I didn't know what to do with it, so I cut the flowers out and then I saved them for later and I just kind of lightly stitched them, like nice long stitches around here because it is stretched fabric so that way they would keep their shape, you know, um, if there was like weight changes or anything like that, so, um, I thought they would look nice on here, so I wanted to add a little decoration to it. Um, I also lengthened the sleeves, and the pattern that I used is like, I know a lot of people use this pattern, and it's like one of the first ones that I bought that I was like so in love with. It's McCall 7531, and you can do so much with this. I've made so many dresses out of this, and shirts. So I did make, I was able to squeeze a shirt out of this as well. So this dress is about knee length, and I think I bought, I think I said I bought three yards of this, so I wish they had other colors of this uh, rib knit because it is very, like it's comfortable, like it's textured, it's pretty textured on the outside, but on the inside it's like flat, so it's, it's really nice, and for something like if you want, um, like a, Sorry, my dog. He's upset that I won't play with him. <laughs> so, um, lost my train of thought. So yes, so that was one of the things that I made this week. I decided that I'm going to like pick a few projects to make. That way, you know, it's just less stress and pressure. Like this shouldn't be something that's stressful. And that way, you know, I can share and connect with all you other sewing ladies or men out there. Um, yeah, so I made, I'll show you, I guess, all the looks that I made, and um, and then I'll get to talking about the projects that I'm going to make next. So this is the top that I made. I changed the neckline by, so this is what I did with my pattern to edit it. I cut this chunk out here so that way I could easily fold this back, and I just kind of... I honestly don't remember how I graded this. I think I maybe I took like a tank top or something or I just sort of guessed on what I wanted it to look like. Um, but so that's how I did that. So when I went to cut it this top out, I just put this back on the fabric and then cut this straight. So that's how I hacked this shirt. And then I made the length. You can see that I made the length about here. So it goes it, the shirt comes down to about here, which is nice, so that way you're, it's not coming up. So, um, these are the ultimate trousers that I made. I added a butt into the top. I did a lot better on my invisible zip, zip this time. Uh, I'll, I'll show it to you. I'll stand back here. So, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I feel like it looks, you know, somewhat professional or classy I guess I don't know I'm just what, trying to change my style a little bit so it, it tucks in neatly it fits nice I added an inch and a half to the original pattern on this pair that I made which I'm happy with I also extended the darts I made them like maybe a centimeter wider um, because my waist goes in more so the, the fit is pretty good I'm happy with the fit I think it looks nice I don't have like weird wrinkling or anything like that. Um, so I think this was a successful make, but I I still wish that I had more of this rib knit because it is so nice. Um, I'm trying to make like clothes that'll work interchangeably. I think that um, makes the most sense. So the other pants that I made out of this, I finished these. I added the zip to that, and um, I think 
this pair together looks, you know, decent too. So I'm really happy about that. And these are actually my favorite pair that I have made so far. And I like to pair, I like to make it so that it works with these boots. So I make sure when, I, when I'm sewing, I'm trying to make sure that the clothes work together interchangeably. I'm trying to make sure that it'll work with the shoes that I wear. So I'm pretty much either like boots or I'm wearing Converse. And these bad boys have seen better days. I need new ones. But uh, yeah, so other than that, occasionally I wear tennis shoes when I work out. But even when I work out, like if I'm not running, then I wear my Converse. Like for lifting and things like that. Um, so that's this outfit and I will show you the next one in a second. Actually one more thing. So I found like with using this knit fabric and you know making this pattern that for me it's been better not to serge the seams just to let them be. If anything just double stitch. I actually think it doesn't say to serge it. I think you're just supposed to double stitch which is what I've done in the past but I wanted to try using the serger to see if it would uh, be nicer but honestly I don't like it because it creates kind of like I can feel it and you can kind of see it on the back of the shirt like these kind of like rolls and I've tried like adjusting the tension and all that and it's just not working so I have one sleeve that was surged and then one that's not and I like the one that's not better and so I made that mistake with the dress like everything surged on top of stitch so I could fix that by just cutting the serge stitching out but I don't know then I'd have a lot less seam allowance so uh, I don't think I'm gonna do that so now I'll show you the other thing that I made okay so this is the other pair of ultimate trousers. This is that fabric that I really liked. I didn't do it too hot on the zipper. I didn't get it quite close enough on here. But with this pair of pants, it's where I learned where I was making my mistakes. So as long as you're learning, right? So these are a little shorter than the other ones that I made. And with this pair, I would wear like my Converse or I can wear boot boots with it. Um, this t-shirt was given to me by a, a friend and um, so it's second hand and I like it. I've made a pattern out of it. Um, I did make one other shirt out of this and I don't know I wasn't in love with it but it was a fabric. It was kind of like one of those fabrics that you buy and then you make something and you're like ew. So I may try to do this again. Um, so, but this is like my most comfortable pair I think I have. I don't know. It's just like a combination of the fabric and just like how it feels on and you know, it's not wrinkly or anything and I, I just love it. Um, so I did make a matching top. I did that vintage simplicity pattern that I talked about in one of my other videos and I'm not a fan. It took me like two days to do this because I was frustrated and it was a lot of cutting and I did some things wrong, like by accident with the interfacing. It's supposed to look like this and I did it inside out, but that's not even like the worst of it. It's just, it could be also the fabric that I picked because it ends up being like pretty bulky and the fit isn't super nice. I feel like there should have been darts down here. At the bottom and you know I I made it and I probably won't make it again I can't even find the pattern to show you that's how much I did not like it it just I don't know is that weird even like the two back points are touching right now and it just feels really boxy I don't like it I really don't like it picture was very misleading in my opinion because I even added length to the bottom and this is still like too short so I feel like it could be cute if it was I don't know it would just the fit is just terrible and I don't have the patience there is so much interfacing in this shirt I don't have the patience to like do all that all over again 
like it, I didn't think it was that cute enough for for the trouble. So I will not be making that again. But at least, you know, I finished it aside from putting stuff in the back. Um, so that is what I made. The dress, the shirt, the pants, and then finishing the pants I'm wearing, plus the shirt. My next projects are going to be, well, I'm halfway done with this one again. And a tip that I want to share, I'm sure some of you already do this, but like I bought a notepad from the dollar store, you know, it's sticky. So while you're going through a pattern and you're making it, you can like add notes and stick it to the pattern uh, and say things like what you did differently, like if you deviated from the pattern instructions or, you know, you just want to make changes the next time around, I add that to here. So that way when I go to sew it again, it's like, oh yeah, I'm going to do it this way and save myself trouble. Um, I think it's very helpful. and. Also, I use this so if I'm like running out of notions or I need to pick something up, like more interfacing or something like that, then I, you know, write on it and I stick it to like my to-do list or calendar, anything, anything like that. Um, which reminds me, I need more of this chalk. I've got one piece that I've been using and it just, you know. I, I gotta figure out how I can like sharpen it. I think there's actually chalk sharpeners, but um, because my lines are fairly thick. So actually, if you know of a way to do this in a way that's not gonna like break this thing, that would be very helpful to know. Or if you know of a sharpener or something like that. Like, but it's gotta like wash off. Cause I found, I used to use, like I had the yellow kind of this chalk and it stayed on the fabric. It never washed out, which was a problem. This white one seems to wash out really good and I don't remember what brand it was because I bought this probably like almost 10 years ago, I want to say. It's been that long. So the, the puffs, the, sorry, making this again, I'm making it in the shiny black material and this is about as far as I got. I still have to put the sleeves on, but the bodice is finished and the fit is really nice. I did a lot better this time. Not that I did bad with the other one, but I'm really pleased with how this is turning out. But I misplaced, unfortunately, I misplaced like the neckline was supposed to attach to here. I gotta find that, I'm not sure it went, but the seams are all surged and ready to go, and I, I surge where I connect the zipper on here so that way it doesn't fray like horribly while I'm working on other pieces of the, the, the bodice. So that's the next thing I'm sewing, well that I'm currently working on right now. Uh, the next top is, I showed you this fabric before. I haven't talked about this pattern, but I think that it would be a really cute pattern hack. So the McCall's um, 10618. So I'm thinking I'm going to make this view, but I'm going to make it longer. See how wide it ends up being. I'll probably use like a tape measure or something. Like once I cut the pattern out and see how wide it is and like how loose fitting it'll be on me because I want it to be at least like I don't know fit around three inches off of me I'm thinking three or four inches off of me so I'm gonna do it out of this we'll see how that turns out and then after that I'm gonna figure out you know something to make that's blue so I can wear it underneath and maybe I'll make a t-shirt version first. I think I bought a couple of yards, which will be enough. This takes a yard and an eighth. So I think I'll be able to squeeze enough out of this. And then the next thing I'm going to do, I'm finally going to make these curtains. I changed my duvet cover and I think that it'll go together. But we'll find out. 
it's not gonna be a fancy pattern I'm just going to buy like a normal metal curtain rod from Menards it's probably gonna be like two or three dollars and throw it up there on the wall and I'll probably make the the gap for the rod bigger so that way at some point I could use a fancier rod but right now I, I don't care my living situation is just special right now so um yeah you know you do what you can do when you can do it so the next project that I'll be working on is with this fabric because it'd be nice to have some cute warmer pajamas for this winter I am using Simplicity 1165 and I've made these shorts probably like I think at least 10 times already and I love them. They're super comfortable for sleeping in. You can make them out of like dang near anything. And here's a pair that I've made. This is the most recent pair that I made and this is actually out of like a old curtain panel and it's very soft. I added like this uh, trim to it. It's very soft and a cute color. I like it. So I'll be doing this next. So those are my one, two, three, four projects that I'll be working on. Um, this top, I do have a pattern that I was going to use for this top too and I will show you what that pattern will be in the next video. It is like a pajama type top. Um, and I think it's by simplicity, so I will show you that. I don't want to kind of rummage through everything right now. Um, and I did say that I would mention like what I use for like my lipstick. So I use Maybelline New York. Their Super Stay Matte Ink. The one that I used in my last video was called Founder. It's the number is one one five Founder, and I think that it's a pretty nice color. The one that I'm wearing today is 6.5. It's called Seductress. And if I can get that to focus. I can't get that to focus. So the I have more of these and I'll probably just wear like a different one each video so you can kind of get a good idea of what they look like. But let me do like a test and show you what it looks like if it comes off. Do I have paper? I'll show you kind of what that looks like. It's, I put it on probably, I don't know, 20 minutes ago. So, so I guess it, it does come off some, but it's, I don't think it's horrible. Yeah, so I've like printed out a bunch of these, so sometimes I uh, practice like sketching for fun. Like if I don't feel motivated enough to do any sewing or anything like that, I still try to keep myself creative because it helps, you know, uh, my mental health. So, you know, different levels of, when you have different levels of energy, you've got to adapt to what you can do at that time. I think adaptation, being able to figure out what works for you, and really pretty much like anything in life is very vital in surviving because you know things are so hard right now for so many people so yeah get you like a something like this and then you can practice doing that if you don't feel like sewing if you still want to be creative i think it's a good idea but that's the end of my video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you have a good day